Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm disorder. It occurs when the natural pacemaker of the heart is lost and the atrium begins beating fast and irregular and this causes the ventricle to beat fast and irregular. In a normal person, the heart rate at rest is 50 to 100 beats per minute, but in atrial fibrillation, the heart rate at rest may be 150 to 200 beats per minute. The symptoms of atrial fibrillation are quite varied. They may have no symptoms whatsoever. It may be something that's picked up incidentally in a routine physical exam or a preoperative exam for, let's say, cataracts, or it may have a whole host of symptoms, such as shortness of breath with exertion, palpitations, exercise intolerance, fatigue, anxiety, chest pain, and dizziness. Atrial fibrillation is not a life-threatening condition, but has two main disabilities, loss of heart rate control and increased risk for stroke. With regard to loss of heart rate control, the heart rate at rest during atrial fibrillation is fast. And when you exercise, the atrial fibrillation causes the heart rate to go even faster. If the heart is exposed to fast heart rates for long periods of time, heart function can be compromised. And over the long term, this can cause heart failure. Atrial fibrillation also increases the risk of stroke. And the reason it does this is because the atrium loses its pumping function. The normal atrial walls expand to accept blood and contract to pump blood out to the ventricles. But in atrial fibrillation, this is lost. In atrial fibrillation, the atrium expands and the walls do not contract. They basically quiver. And within the atrium, blood stagnates. It, there is turbulence and clots can form. And if these clots are expelled and they lodge in the blood vessels of the brain, a stroke can result. The procedure we do for atrial fibrillation is called pulmonary vein isolation, and it involves isolating the veins in the heart that contain the abnormal electrical signals that cause atrial fibrillation. This is a model of the heart, and I want to show you the left atrium. You can see the atrium is in the back, and these vessels coming into the atrium are the pulmonary veins. This is the inside of the left atrium, and these circles are the pulmonary veins which enter the left atrium. The abnormal signals are within the pulmonary veins, and to treat that, we perform ablation, which is electrical energy applied to the heart to cauterize around the pulmonary veins. And that cauterization creates scar tissue around the veins to prevent an electrical barrier from the abnormal signals getting from the veins through the barrier into the atrium, causing atrial fibrillation. Welcome to our stereotaxis room, our x-ray equipment. It is state-of-the-art and allows us to take the very clearest images with the very least amount of radiation exposure to the patient. One of the features of our x-ray equipment is we have biplane, and that means we can use this piece of equipment and that piece of equipment to get two images of the heart simultaneously. We have a computerized 3D uh, mapping system which allows us to make a computer model of the heart in three dimensions and see our catheters within one millimeter of accuracy. And this is an example of the screen we see during our mapping system. We uh, totally rely on our 3D model so that we can see our catheter in three dimensions as we move the catheter around the atrium and we don't need to use x-rays which is very cool and uh, decreases the radiation exposure to, to the patient. The next thing I'd like to show you is the most amazing feature of the room, and that's our magnets. We have computerized magnetic catheter navigation, and these two big structures on either side of the table are large magnets that allow us to move the catheter within the heart by changing the magnetic field ever so slightly. And we can do that in a very accurate manner and have very fine control over our catheters. So right now we're in the control room and this is actually where I do the procedure. Instead of in the old days standing by the patient bedside in heavy lead gear and with instruments, we actually do the entire procedure from here and using this mouse. So in this room we have a whole bunch of screens. These screens over here record the electrical signals from the catheters that are within the heart. This screen is our mapping system, and we can see the three-dimensional image 
of the atrium we're working in as well as the catheters and where they are located. This screen is the stereotaxis screen and allows us to navigate magnetically. As you can see, we can move this in any direction to see exactly where the catheter is within our model. This is actual model of the case and this shows the left atrium. The pulmonary veins are shown here in the colored lines and the red dots show the ablation points. This is where the ablation was performed around the pulmonary veins to perform electrical isolation. What we mean by ablation is the creation of scar tissue around the veins which provide an electrical barrier so that the abnormal signals from within the pulmonary veins can no longer affect the atrium and cause the atrium to go into atrial fibrillation. With a manual catheter, which is a stiff catheter, it uh, is only in contact with the heart wall part of the time. Remember, the atrium is expanding as it fills with blood and contracting as it expels blood. So the catheter really is not in contact with the wall all the time with a manual catheter, which is pushed into place. But with a stereotaxis catheter, it's pulled into the wall of the atrium, and it follows the atrium no matter where the atrial wall goes. So it's always in contact with the atrial wall. And we think that gives better contact and allows us to give better ablation lesions. So we think that's gonna be more effective. So let me show you a manually controlled catheter. The catheter is fairly stiff, and in the left atrium where we're working, the walls are thin and the chamber is very delicate. And with a stiff catheter, you can inadvertently puncture the wall of the atrium and cause bleeding. And even experienced operators have this complication. This is the most common serious complication of catheter ablation. Now in contrast, <clears throat> the magnetically steered catheters uh, do not have to be stiff. They are floppy, they are soft, and they move with the magnetic field. They do not need to be pushed. They are drawn into the wall of the atrium by the magnetic field, and it's virtually impossible to perforate or puncture the wall of an atrium with one of these catheters. This is an exciting time to be an electrophysiologist, and I'm delighted to bring all these new innovations to our patients.